Hello, I'm Paul Weston, and this video is about face masks, uh, which by their very nature also makes this a video about fear, psychological conditioning, and the exercise of authoritarian power. And I don't want to make a lengthy argument about whether masks actually work properly, because that argument has already been made along the lines of a virus being very, very small, uh, and the weave of face masks being very, very wide, and therefore as useless at protecting us from unfilterable viruses uh, as a shark cage is in protecting a diver from ravening shoals of piranha fish. And the truth of the matter is that face masks are nothing to do with a public health issue and everything to do with power and control. I would say 99% of people entering a biohazardous area such as your local Tesco supermarket are now fully paid up members of the face mask muzzle club, but before we were ordered to wear them, only around 10% did so. And this is an important observation because it means the vast majority of us uh, now muzzle up not because we fear the virus, uh, but because we fear either the government or the hysterical and possibly violent reaction of our fellow bedwetting citizens. Now, I don't wear a muzzle in aisle three, and to be honest, the whole thing is a very uncomfortable experience. Uh, an increased heart rate when entering the shop uh, suggests that shopping unmuzzled is now an adrenaline surging misery sport where nerves come into play. You, you realise you are the centre of disapproving attention, and I would suggest the most intense disapproval comes not from the 10% who have muzzled up since day one, uh, but from a small minority of the 90% of recent uh, reluctant muzzlers who thoroughly resent the fact uh, that they're being forced to do something they don't want to do. And here we come to the psychology of the muzzle mandate. Uh, we already know the government is using a team of Dr. Sigmund Spoonbenders uh, in order to coerce the population into the correct Pavlovian response. And this is evident in their insistence that the mask is not uh, necessarily worn to protect the wearer, uh, but to protect others from what is presented 24-7 as a killer virus. Uh, in other words, if you don't wear the mask, you're a selfish, evil human being who cares little about murdering uh, every last calm, caring and compassionate middle-class woman called Karen uh, in the organic bakery section of Waitrose. Now, isn't that clever of the government and the government's uh, in-house spoon benders? They don't need to create fear and obedience via the Gestapo. They can just get their own citizens to self-stasi each other into submission. Brilliant. I mean, evil, of course, but brilliant nonetheless. And another thing this wicked government fully understands is how emasculated and defeated the British have become after being coerced into wearing something uh, over our face we would really rather not wear over our face. And it should be obvious that to self-muzzle against your will is to submit to the authoritarian state. And with this act of submission comes shame and self-loathing, which any power-crazed political inadequate will tell you is an ideal situation to force the entire population into because a cowed, fearful, shameful population is a controllable population, a broken population, and as such a population open to ever further incremental controls, uh, particularly so if the majority of the coerced citizens are fully aware their compliance is based not on a rational scientific necessity in a time of danger, but on a lie uh, sustained via fear which brings with it shame. It's one thing to be ashamed of yourself uh, because you failed to enter the burning house to rescue the old lady, uh, but quite another when your sense of shame is brought about by muzzling up in the full knowledge the muzzle is useless and you are living a lie based on a dishonest government's manufactured fear as opposed to the quite rational and honest fear of being burned to death before you can safely eject the little old lady 
uh, from the nearest convenient window. One form of shame is worse than the other, and we can see this uber shame explode in pathological anger as the muzzled scream at the unmuzzled. In the very beginning, before we knew how relatively harmless the virus was to the healthy of any age, uh, everyone took precautions with hand sanitizers in their cars and such like, and if we had been told to wear masks in March 2020, I think we would all have complied quite happily. But it's different now, and the majority of the population, while still prepared to take sensible precautions, just want to get back to normal which presents a challenge to the government, which doesn't want to get back to normal at all. And I've been thinking about why this should be. A new world order theories aside, which I, I don't necessarily discount, by the way, uh, all I can come up with is the age-old theory that politicians only become politicians because they want to exercise power over the little people. And having had a taste of uh, additional COVID power, they are now reluctant to give it up, which means they need to continue the obvious pretense that we are all going to die next week if we cast off their protective control over us. And it's not just the power-crazed uh, pygmy politicians. Take the chief medical officer, Chris Whitty, for example. Here's a a mild-mannered little man of probable inadequacies uh, suddenly thrust into the limelight, which makes him feel a person of noticeable importance. He never wants to let that feeling go, so he isn't prepared to let the so-called pandemic go either. Hence the now ridiculous situation where the virus, having done its worse, uh, but only now are we ordered to wear face masks. And this is done, of course, in order to make us constantly feel there really is something to fear, uh, that the situation is far from over, and every time we put this bloody thing on, we are reminded that a, a deathly disease still stalks the land, uh, no matter that this is no longer true. And it's incredibly important to our ruling elites that we're not allowed to slowly return to normal. The new normal is here to stay, they tell us, and I firmly believe uh, this is linked absolutely to their determination to continue the exercise of power they could scarcely have dreamt of wielding over a population uh, up until a few months ago. OK, rant over. Thanks for listening. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. And if you have subscribed, uh, please check it is still valid. Uh, YouTube seems to have taken a bit of a dislike to me, it would seem, although I cannot begin to imagine why. Perhaps truth is not wholly in tune with their community standards.